Okay, so, today I'm gonna, rather than doing another one of those big tutorial things, I'm just gonna do a fairly relaxed session for a while, I'm thinking maybe about three quarters of an hour to an hour, see how we go, of just generating some sounds in Reaper, uh, quite simply, not going for anything in particular, but just kind of aiming to demonstrate my process for coming up with new samples. This is just going to be a, a long and boring video, so feel free to just look at nice snippets of this and don't watch the whole thing, but just trying to demonstrate how sometimes I come up with new stuff, just seeing if I can get anything out of this session, so, uh, yeah, just a, just a bit of a, bit of a relaxed one today. I guess I'm really just starting out with maybe a bit of a click tone. Oh, I like that. Nice. Starting to get a bit of a bit of a weird tone coming in the back. Ooh. Okay. Let's see where this goes. Okay. This is starting to get a little strange, but that's good, that's good, that's what we want. more of a synthy direction than I was previously expecting, which is cool. Okay, so I'm thinking at the moment what I'll do kind of in contrast to what I was originally planning to do, which was a percussion tone, is kind of get a bit of a synth tone out of this. That's cool. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is just fire up Audacity. Um, and give this... Oh, and actually I'll take the input for that input gain to that way down and let's give this a bit of a live record. Sounding nice. Okay, never mind about that. Yeah. That's cool. Export that to fresh sounds now. Make sure it's the good audio quality. None of that 16-bit PCM garbage. Only the f the finest for my <laughs> homemade synth tones. Okay, so that's. This is 
a, a bit of a weird tone at the moment, I think. In that it's not a very naturalistic, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and that it's kind of... It kind of s- sounds like lots of little percussion hits as opposed to an actual tone, which is, like, really what it is. Um, so let's try, let's try playing with some formants. I think that could be cool. Oh, yeah. Take that up a bit because form and shifts downwards always tend to decrease the uh, perceived volume. Um... <laughs> okay, so before we did a band pass there, and now look at it. it all the weird frequencies are starting to come right back in. Um, so let's just do an- another band pass. of just awful reverb. Yeah, boy! Okay, that sounds kind of bad. Um, it's not, let's EQ that, because we're getting some really nasty resonance. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Let's just notch that one there. Um, yeah, I'll keep that high shelf, why not? Okay, so that's a bit of a problem. I can just EQ that out again. Coming right back in on that original frequency of 420 hertz, nice. Actually, let's let's give this a little bit of analysis in the retune. Okay, so it's it's having a lot of trouble figuring out what the um original pitches, which is good. Um, that means we've got a, a nice, you know, rich synth tone as opposed to the sine wave that we started with. Just sipping my tea here. Um, uh, just thinking, I, I'm not quite sure where this is going, to be honest. <laughs> this is kind of a bit of a mess already. Um, Okay, maybe what I'm thinking is we slow this down. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Give this another audacity recording. It's a really nice kind of almost one or tricks point never style like low like metallophone hit, like muted metallophone sound. I think that's long enough. Oh, sorry. What I said earlier, I can't be rendering in 16 bit. Okay, <laughs> um, not sure what I'm going to do with this now. Um, we can we can leave those two nice little symptoms to start off with. Um, but now something different, something different. something in a really different frequency range. Ooh. It's 
Struis cube, let's go with it. Let's see what we can get out of this. Nice little high triangle tap. Um, start with some delay, make it make it really chaotic. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Maybe. Ooh, yeah. Make it really warped. Get that kind of old glitchy VHS sound. Yeah, I like that. Just take out some of those really low frequencies, we're not going to really need those. Um, Kind of like a sci-fi synth sound, which I quite enjoy. Oh yeah, that's good. You know what? <laughs> Let's do another session. Oh, this is going well. It's a nice kind of. Nice kind of just easy, simple, you know, sci-fi effects synth. Leave that. Give it a good old render. Go a little further with this one. Um, see if we can get anything. I'm not sure we'll be able to. Oh, no, wrong one. Not sure if we'll be able to, but give it a try. Ooh, that's nice. No, I like this. I think this calls for some LFO. Um, yeah, full range. Go all out there. I, I no, no. Because um, uh, that's going to give us random frequencies. What we want is for it all to stick in just octave jumps. Um, okay, so make it centered. Um, say. So Oh, it's a two octave range. Oh, uh, can I edit this one? Um, Let's not worry about that. Um, let's go back into that. Change the other. Right.
maybe a little more delay. Why not? Give this another, give this another shot. It's clipping, but whatever. Um, is that all add the noise aesthetic? just re repeat a note forever template um, so let's let's start completely from scratch um, and oh back to the classic um, do that beforehand um, before we do anything just EQ this um, Always click the wrong one because uh, we're going to be working with a very specific set of frequencies this time. Um, just take the band part, take the um, band, band part, band width down so that we get that nice little peak of specific frequencies. And why not just duplicate the exact same effect again? That's how we roll. Um, just check that nothing weird's happening. Um, that's cool. Okay. Oh, no, 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 I did not like that at all. Okay, so I think at the moment we've got kind of a nice little uh, rain sound effect, I guess. Turn that one up. Ooh, oh yeah. Mm, I like this. Shut up, but I think this is kind of a nice, uh, nice little almost vinyl crackly sound. Uh, let's run it that for 56 seconds, why not? Okay, <laughs> maybe turn it off for now. Um, let's call that vinyl crackle. Obviously, there's still that. Oh, <laughs> There's still that base of noise there, but I think that little crackle effect we're getting in the high end is quite nice. Um, now let's let's see if we can isolate that. Even. Um, do they have a hyper sulfur in the field? Um, no, that is not what I was thinking. Of. Uh, okay. Let's see what that's coming out of. Yeah, so that's just kind of acting like a normal low pass filter. Um, just shelving it.
Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is... This is the, um... This is just a plug-in that just generates random glitches. Um, after... After any kind of thing that did pull up a noise gate. Um, uh, oh, yep. And let's just put that up to 100%. Why not? Make them as loud as everything else. Final crackle, glitchy. Not even showing up. We'll normalize all these later. Right? Um, don't worry about that for now. Um, that's a bit loud. Oh, sorry. Um, why not? Let's just go with a simple A this time, but let's make it 880. Um, there are things up a little and make it a soy. Actually, I've been I've been talking a fair bit in in the um or I will be talking in the um video on how I made becoming about the um the saw wave patch. So let's just try and make another saw wave patch, I guess. Um, so I, I I feel like eleven is kind of a magic number when it comes to the amount of sense you want to have your saw waves apart by for just like a generic synth. And let's well, let's put one in the middle. Why not? Oh yeah. Maybe, yeah, add, add some more. Oh, that's a bit too dissonant. <laughs> okay, what the... It's like an undertone series or something going on there. Um, let's get rid of that before we start to add any reverb. Much better. There's still something weird going on here, so let's try a few notches. I think that's about it. No. Uh, less sure about this. So let's just leave that be for now. Um, we can put a bit of a volume thing on it. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. So for the, um, the bit we're coming out, for the, our release as it were, we're not going to take the effects down, we're just going to take the um, tone itself down so the effects continue so we get that reverb tail. Ooh, this, was this causing problems? That looks alright, sticks around minus two. Or oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Super irritating at that that volume, but that's gonna sound better once it's filtered. Um, oh, something, something's happened there. Don't worry about it. We can fix that in post. <laughs> um, and because that tone is already starting to get on my nerves, let's try something else. Um, Hell, 
why not? Let's do some... Let's play with some LFO stuff. Um, I, reckon it's, I reckon it's time to, to, to hack into a mainframe. And how you hack into a mainframe is like this. Oh, no, no, that's... Okay, sorry. We're starting to hack into the mainframe right about now, I think. So we're already using our LFO to modulate the um, the note and the octave. <laughs> now let's try modulating the tuning system itself with another random oscillator. Let's set that one. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This is real good mainframe action right here. Add a tiny bit of reverb to this. <laughs> no idea why the, why the floor on that is plus 15 decibels. It always clips. things can we do with this? Um, we could start by pitch shifting it a little, or, or a lot, really, a lot, really. <laughs> I have a full pitch shift in the other direction. Oh yeah. This is, this is almost like um, uh, that chip speech effect that one of Tricks Point never uses all the time. Which is quite nice. Oh, but it's a clipping, of course it is. Um, let's take that down then. Add some more reverb. That's a huge because we're getting some nasty tapping signals right at the bottom end. Uh, just another duck and glitch generator for the fun of it. Ooh, that's nice. Just at the end, add another EQ. Just with another high pass filter. And just take the game down a little bit because it keeps clipping. Um. Okay, let's run to that. And yeah, that's, that's, uh, um, the, yeah, this is a video, so I should probably give you some useful tips. Um, <laughs> uh, my useful tip for today is, 
it's better to have things a long way under Unity than to have them, than to have them clipping because um, uh, you can always normalize in post. You can't make things not clip in post. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, Hmm. I'm kind of reaching the end of my ideas streak at the moment, I think. So, actually, let's let's do something very simple, um, but which I kind of need to do at the moment, which is get some more, I guess, symbol sounds. If I can manage to, you know... <laughs> stay on one topic um, for more than about five minutes, which, if the previous half an hour has been an indication, will not be likely. God. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing Gaussian noise generators now. Sound will haunt me. Oh, okay, just go away. <laughs> I know how this is gonna sound, so I'm just gonna. Oh, why do I always keep clicking low pass when I mean high pass? I know how that's gonna sound, so I'm just gonna do this in isolation without hearing it because I do not want to hear that bloody sound again okay oh much better much better because I, I, I kept um uh, adding data in the volume parameter for the um track itself rather than in the effects unit so what I ended up doing was just um was um oh, was um Ah, no, uh, doing something that wasn't terribly useful for a compressor. Um, now, can I... Because we're going with different maximum values, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to... Oh, nice, we can. While we're here, let's just delete that one. Well, it sounds like a hard style track now. Okay, but this needs to be louder. And that kind of needs to shut up quite a bit. Maybe just add it on. Just have a wall of compressors now. That's what really what we need. And you know what? This is gonna be risky, but a weird 
knee, so it's a bit more complex than the ratio that we're talking about in terms of the um, model compressors do together. And let's try, and this is going to be risky because we're a high volume now, but let's try some former shipping. Okay. Sounds alright. Let's add some reverb back in. Okay. I don't quite like that really. Um uh, well, let's say that's a crash. It doesn't really sound like a crash, but it'll do. Um I guess we can see I guess just finishing off this little session, let's just see what we can do with this. Let's go all out. Let's add a whole bunch of effects. Just see what happens. Ooh, okay. I feel like, yeah, it's harsh noise time. Okay. We've had our trying to make something that actually sounds like a drum kit time. Now let's. these type of things. Let's add another one of these generators, but... Man <sighs> Let's manipulate it so that it does some weird stuff. And yeah, we can edit this one. Oh boy. Oh boy! Oh yeah. Um, I just go and um, uh, make, make it a bit nicer, um, and oh, and no, I has, uh, didn't. Yeah, that's good. That's. This isn't going quite the way I thought it would. Um, oh, this is going to require actual thought. Um, oh, why is this not working? Oh, this, is, this is no way to end off the session, having to think about what I've done. Um, okay, so it looks like what I've got here is not actually at zero. Uh, no, it is. How peculiar. Um. Uh. um. Okay, let's do some troubleshooting. Um. Just add a little bypass for that. Um. Oh, no. Oh. God, I'm an idiot. Um, just, just add a bypass for a regular EQ you've already got. What, I, what you have to do is set the gain to zero, and then put it way back up the front, and then and add a bypass. Um, um, so yeah, this is 
is going to change the way it sounds and then it's going to suddenly clip in, but that's cool. That is all cool. Okay, let's not worry about all that rubbish we put in. Let's just have a natural sounding glitch generator. Ah, yep. Much better. Let's put it up to 420. Like I edited, edited it before. Um, and it's kind of a bit of a skitter sound. Um, but... That's good. Um, well, I think that's about it for today. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like about yeah about forty minutes of just sound generation. <laughs> um, if you've stuck around the whole video, why? Um, you can't do something worthwhile. <laughs> um, this is this is just me. Like literally recording, just trying to come up with random sound effects. Um, honestly, this session hasn't been quite as fruitful as I'd hoped. Normally, I, normally I get something better out of this long, with just coming up with sounds and reefer and audacity. But um, uh, yeah, I guess I guess I'll be continuing this series on percussion generation soon. Um, that'll hopefully be a lot more interesting, and maybe something in Chuck as well soon. Um, Kind of, <laughs> I to kind of give, I guess, a more scientific uh, approach to doing this kind of thing rather than what I've been doing in Reaper so far, which is just kind of bodging everything um, in a very non-systematic way. Mm -hmm. But I hope at least this has been kind of useful, if only for a kind of mindless meditative session of watching me come up with random sounds. Um, but yeah. Uh, stick around on the channel for more stuff of this ilk, although more organised, not just kind of uh, ranting for three quarters of an hour and generating whatever I feel like. Um, but yeah, thanks for having a look.